His discoveries validated the Big Bang Theory and are central to the study of star formation. Robert Wilson, physicist, cosmologist, radio astronomy innovator, and a tech icon. My career has mostly been building instruments for astronomy, and I've had the good fortune to use them on some projects which turned out uh, very interesting results. Projects like this one in 1964, when, along with fellow scientist Arno Penzias, Robert Wilson made a discovery that earned them a Nobel Prize and a place in history. That project began with a radio telescope called the Horn Reflector Antenna. It was located at Bell Telephone Laboratories in Homedell, New Jersey, where Wilson and Penzias worked. Originally constructed in 1959 to support early satellite communications, the 20-foot horn antenna was largely obsolete when Wilson and Penzias asked to use it to listen to the cosmos. What we were going to measure was radiation from gas in the Milky Way galaxy. And that gas does not produce optical radiation. So if you go outside and look, you won't see it. Even if you look with a Hubble telescope, you won't see anything. In fact, one of the components is just hot electrons that are moving in a magnetic field and radiating. So this could produce a low level of radiation that the 20-foot horn reflector was ideal for measuring. Before it could be used for their radio astronomy experiments, the scientists had to design and build a system that would allow them to calibrate the horn antenna's receiver. Well, as soon as we put our whole accurate measuring system together, there was a big problem because we were seeing about an extra three degrees of radiation. That difference was significant. So much so that we could not believe that the galaxy was causing it. And we at first thought there was something wrong with our equipment, of course. So one of the things we did was turn our sensitive instrument down, look at the horizon, and scan the horizon, including New York City, to see if the, there was a lot of excess radiation beyond the thermal radiation the Earth would have. And no, there wasn't. Still stumped by the extra three degrees of radiation, the scientists spent months trying to pinpoint its origin. We looked out of the uh, plane of the planets to see if it had anything to do with the solar system. We looked away from the Milky Way to see if it had anything to do with our galaxy but there was nothing uh, out there. They looked for interference closer to home, even at the pigeons living inside of the horn. We got up there and scraped the, the pigeon droppings out. That made a little difference, but not a significant difference. Clearly, it wasn't pigeon droppings. That's when they realized the noise was coming from outside our galaxy. The explanation was one of those uh, accidents of, that occur in science. What they had discovered was cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB. In effect, the remnant noise from the creation of the universe as described by the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory suggests that the universe began as a hot, dense fireball that erupted over 13 billion years ago. Big Bang theorists believe that radiation from that event would still be detectable, and in 1964, a group at Princeton University had begun to search for it. It was only when Wilson and Penzias heard this and shared their findings with the Princeton group that the two recognized the significance of their mysterious three degrees. The discovery of the cosmic background radiation is something that, you know, I can look back and say there's a specific record in 1964 when we first saw it, but we didn't understand what we had. Wilson and Penzias published their results to an eager audience. Recognition followed, and more than a decade later, reward. Sharing the 1978 Nobel Prize for Physics are Arno A. Penzias and Robert W. Wilson of Bell Laboratories. And I had a couple of immediate reactions. One was, oh my God, I've got to give a Nobel lecture. <laughs> the other one, well, it just was, was amazing to be put in the company with all of the other people who have won Nobel Prizes. I don't think of myself that way. After their Big Bang discovery, Wilson and Penzias continued developing receivers, eventually putting one to work in Arizona in search of interstellar molecules. 
We built the most sensitive receiver we could make. We realized that we had an instrument which could do something that no one had ever done before. We fought for five days, getting it all to work together. And then Robert Wilson had what he describes as his eureka moment. We put it up on the antenna, and with a two-second integration time, we saw the signal. What we really discovered was the existence of giant molecular clouds, which explained all the star formation that goes on. And that provided the tools for studying star formation uh, in the universe. The perfect culmination of years of tinkering with electronics and astronomy. When I was growing up, I, I fixed radios for people. I learned all about the radio, vacuum tube radios and uh, how they worked and learned how to fix them. And later, televisions came. They were vacuum tube televisions at the time. So a lot of the same uh, techniques applied. Wilson is now at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, working with a special receiver called a submillimeter array, or SMA. The SMA is a general purpose instrument. It's, it's been used to look at the dust disks which surround uh, young stars, the sort of disk that would probably form a planetary system. An experiment which is coming up will be to use it in what we call very long baseline interferometer, where we record signals in Hawaii, someone in California may record signals at the same time, someone in Chile, maybe even at the South Pole. Put this all together, you have an Earth-sized radio telescope, and we should be able to see into the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Cosmology is headed toward understanding the gap between the time the cosmic background radiation was released and the time the earliest stars and galaxies have been observed. There's a transition in there which has not been measured. One can speculate that maybe stars formed and then they collapsed into galaxies. It could have been the other way around. Wilson's interest in astronomy began with a desire to learn. When I started in radio astronomy, I was drawn by the interest in astronomy, the, the physics to be learned, and the fact that I could use my interest in electronics. Now, with a half century of discovery behind him, Wilson's quest continues. It's that pure passion for learning and science that makes Robert Wilson, thought leader, visionary, and Nobel Prize winning radio astronomer, a tech icon and a hero of the digital revolution.